Joining us now in Studio B is a man who is always at full strength, BYU assistant Tim Lacombe. Tim, welcome back to the show. Thank you. It's good to be here. And it was my request to put Greg up here. Um, I think he got those glasses out of the Glory of Vanderbilt collection. Uh, isn't that the Seinfeld deal? It's let's, like George's. Let's put, it, let's put it right in the middle so it's prominent. Like it's they right. are unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. I, I right love here, that guy. Right so we gotta we gotta go after him a little we bit. We love Greg. Yeah. yeah. Tim, I know you're a concert guy, big into music, playing a band. Jeremy and I were talking about off we the went top to a of the show. Oh, Guster last night. Have you heard of them? No. Oh, okay. Okay. So I'll introduce you. Yes, we're introducing you now to Guster, okay. but we're noticing a trend of. Okay, when we go to concerts together, there's nobody under the age of 30. And so it's like, oh, man, have we entered that stage of our Well, of our if you lives? go to the ones I go to, which are 80s metal bands, it's, there's nobody under the age of 60. So <laughs> I'm kinda, Could be worse. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it is crazy. But they, everybody has a good time, so it's good. Yeah, that, that's, that's the thing. Everyone's there because they know all the songs. That's right. Which, yeah, it's like the hardcore people. Yep. You know, okay, if you were to suggest one 80s metal band to go see that you absolutely would tell any person any age to go see, who would it be? I think the any person, any age, obviously, family show, Def Leppard. Def Leppard. Yeah. Family show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there is. They're just family channel. They're straight down the line. I yes. mean, they could run their stuff on, you know, on KBYU. They could run a show here in Provo. Um, and I love them. They're great. Def Leppard on BYU TV. Yeah. Uh, by Stadium the way, of Fire. Hey, good, good idea. Let's I go. like it a lot. Is there is there a band or a song that you would use to define the BYU basketball season this year? That's putting you on the spot. Uh, that is putting me on the spot. Um, I, I mean, I think I don't know if it's song right off the top of my head, but I think that uh, certainly it's been kind of a up and down, you know, uh, rocky up and down year. And uh, but I think that the guys are really resolved to to continue to play hard. And I think our like coach said the other night, I think our best basketball is ahead of us. Um, it was encouraging to get, uh, you know, some some guys playing really well that we've we really need to play well, and um, seeing that the other night was great. Why is it that things have changed that way mentally? What happened? What switch was flipped? No, I, I think with um, with if you know you're talking about Gavin Baxter, you know, go, coming into the the break. I think that you know Gavin, it's hard to come home from a mission. It's hard to get acclimated into everything. It's hard to, uh, you know, f- you know, understand exactly what our schemes are, what you're trying to do, and you need, you do need to understand that before you can go out there and be really effective, because otherwise you're thinking all the time. And uh, I think Gavin's gotten to a point where now he he really kind of understands everything, most everything, and he's uh, instead of thinking, he's just reacting and playing. Um, and and Nick too. I mean, Nick's been off for a year, and uh, and Nick came back, and it looked like you know, Nick of 2017 and, um, and he's both guys have worked hard as all our guys are working really hard. We haven't literally have not had bad practices all year long. Um, but it's just a matter of, I think everything clicking and everybody clicking together. And I think we'll see that with Connor Harding at some point as well. Kind of that post mission, like he's, he's been starting, he's been good, but kind of who he really is. Yeah, exactly. And, and at this point, I mean, we've played 24 games. Um, you know, his, that's about as many games as he's played in the season. Um, you know, in high school and such. So it, it does become long and, and it, it is a grind. But I think you'll see, you know, hopefully continuing from the young guys to get more experience, feel more comfortable and, and come in and help us. You're privy to all of these things, to practice all of the details that the general public does not see in regard to all of your players and how much they're going to play. Because I know that some people are like, whoa, how if Gavin Baxter went for 25 and 10, well, it took him so long to start. What? <laughs> Why do you feel like Saturday was the right time for Gavin to turn the corner and, and now contribute some more? You know, it's interesting because we've actually had <clears throat> thoughts of, of starting him earlier, and we've actually talked with Gavin about it. Um, and Gavin actually felt better kind of coming off the bench. Um, but this was a time where we felt like it would be good. Um, their size and athleticism, LMU, was is very good, and they're very – tough and physical and it's hard to score on them um and Gavin brings an element to the game that you know uh, he, he stepped out and made two threes but all everything else was kind of a hustle play putbacks um or instinctive plays cut into the rims for lobs that you know I worked at Utah with Keith Van Horn and he was 
the only other guy, you know, that I've been around that could go get the, some of those balls. Like the one McKay threw up in the second half was crazy, and Gavin just went up and got it. So he's got great natural ability, and now with the understanding and the confidence, you know, I, I, I really believe that the sky's the limit. Um, but I think that it will continue to be a process. Um, I don't know that, you know, he – yeah, I would love him to get 25 and 10 every night. Um, <laughs> You're at least like, someone's kind of doing that already. Yeah, but history but history would say that, you know, there's ups and downs in right. everything that you do. Right. Uh, Nick Emery, you talked about it. It was great to see him score season high 17, 5 of 5 from 3. Um, what was different for him, especially in that second half? I just think everything kind of came together. Right? You know, Nick and I have actually talked during the season about, you know, this whole journey almost being like climbing a mountain. And as you climb the mountain, the most of the grueling part is the, is the ascent. And very rarely do you, you know, once you get to the top of the mountain, it's time to turn around and go home. So you don't get to enjoy that part of it as much. Um, and talked about this whole journey being kind of like climbing the mountain. And, I, you know, I think as a staff, we kept telling him, just keep working hard because he is. He works hard. He tries his best. Um, and things just weren't clicking. But I think Saturday night was a moment where he actually kind of got to stand up on top and look around and say, this is pretty cool. Um, and we, you know, I, we love Nick. We love everything that he brings to our team, and um, have all the confidence in the world that he can he can do what he did the other night a lot. And what was awesome was it wasn't added or just nice what Nick Emery and Gavin Baxter did. It was needed, yeah, because this was kind of a different night. Season low twenty three points at halftime. LMU was doing their thing. Yoli Childs and uh, T.J. Haas combined for twelve points. You had to have it. And they gave it. Yeah, Gavin Baxter and Nick. It, it was huge. And I think it was the first game that TJ and, and Yoli have been, you know, really kind of silenced. And um, either one of them has kind of brought it and had really good nights. But um, like I said, LMU is really tough and they have a great plan. And um, they were certainly not going to let those guys have nights. Um, and so it was imperative that we had some other guys step up. And then I think you need to talk about McKay Cannon. Uh, Seven his, assists. Yeah. James Bateman has zero points I know, in the game. Which is, Are you kidding me? I mean, we had a conversation in staff meeting a couple of weeks ago talking about the best point guards in the league, and he's in the discussion. Um, I think that that kid is – I mean, Bateman's phenomenal. Um, and I don't know – I would guess he probably hasn't had a game where he went for zero. Um, and I think part of that is he may, you know, he probably missed a couple shots that he'd make, but – uh, for the most part, I think McKay was on him a lot. Nick was on him a lot. And they, those two guys did a great job. Assistant head coach Tim Lacombe with us on BYU Sports Nation. Nine games into West Coast Conference play. You're in second place by half game all alone. And the tournament format has shifted now that if you are one of the top two seeds, you get a buy into Monday. As you position for March, how much are you thinking about that as opposed to just win the next game? Just win the next game. Well, it's certainly... Uh, it's an advantage and it's certainly something that right now is attainable. So it's something we are thinking about, but in order to do that, you have to win the next game. Um, and I think that with this group and talked about a little bit of the ups and downs, the inconsistencies, I think the most important thing is that we are certainly on the task at hand. Um, I think this is the best, at least since, you know, we, you know, it is, it's the best league we've been in, uh, in the West coast conference from, you know, top to bottom. This season. This in the season, one, in right. The, the teams, yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. And I think yesterday I saw where there's five, six teams close to, I think five teams in the top 100 RPI and just you, in LMU's at 104. So I think this is the most balanced, the toughest this league's been. So with seven games left, that's an eternity. Um, and really the thing we need to focus on is at Portland Thursday night, going up there and playing well and winning that game. And let's finish with this. Yeah, Portland hasn't won a league game, but they did take Santa Clara to OT and then a, uh, Pacific at home, the, the tough road, and then home on Saturday. Tournament. Yeah, they've got, they've got three legit scores, um, you know, three guys that could really go for 30 any, kind, any night. Um, they were down 10 with a minute six at Santa Clara. And, I mean, I'm watching the film when I got it, um, and I'm thinking, wait, this game went to overtime. It, they were down 10 with 106 and ended up tying it and going to overtime. Wow. So they're fighting. They're resilient. They've got really good players, and we've just got to go in and do what we do.
All right, let's give you some BYU Sports Nation karma to go and yes. do what you do. Appreciate it. Go to Voodoo Donuts, enjoy yourself. I mean, that, and that's, and, uh, that's where all the karma resides yeah. right there. <laughs> Inside Rebel. the Greg Revelle picture. <laughs> Love this guy. 12-year-old Greg. Karma transfer complete. Thanks, Greg. Nice glasses, Greg. <laughs> Good thing the uh, fashion doesn't transfer.